more resources, visit rym.org. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast is for you. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our Friday show. All this week we have been talking with uh, Bill Smith. And, and just to, to clarify, if you're looking for his booklet online, it would be William P. Smith, I think listed on the, the booklet cover, uh, but goes by Bill. Uh, but the booklet is Obsessed with Your Phone, Disconnecting to Connect. And so we've been talking a lot about technology uh, smartphone, social media, and we talked about some boundaries yesterday or the day before, and then uh, how pastors can deal with the issue yesterday from the pulpit. Um, uh, Bill, on page five, you say, you know, we use our phones to soothe ourselves when irritated, confused, anxious, bored, or upset by playing games, seeing what our friends are doing or saying, catching up on the latest news, or posting our complaints and frustrations. Um, and so we know that, you know, as we engage online, as we pick up our phones, that that's just some some actions of something that's going on deeper in the heart. And so we know that there are hard issues we have to be thinking about, you know, as Christians. So so what, what do you think are some of those hard issues that people are dealing with that, that are kind of manifesting themselves in, in an obsession uh, with with their phone? I, I, I so appreciate that you want to go to that level. I think it's essential um, because otherwise you're just looking at activities, trying to manage activities, leaving the underlying um, longing. Uh, to, to, it, it'll just poke up somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, hard issues are, are <laughs> they're, they're fun, funny in, in this sense. They're, they're all idiosyncratic. Yours and mine are completely different. Um, and yet there's enough similarities that we can go, yeah, okay, I, I, I do that kind of thing too. And if we talk long enough, we'll find the twists. So in the book, I go over four that I think are broadly generic, recognizing that the way people engage each one are, are different. But for instance, um, I, I think there's a big part of us that is searching for some kind of significance. In other words, it's that recognition that Having been made in the image of God, we were made to count. We, we, we really were made to be important. Um, to be the only important, no. But, but that doesn't mean that we weren't, that there isn't a specialness to each one of us. Uh, and, and I think that we, we have to capture some way of, of talking about that that doesn't go off the deep end. However, having been fallen, having gone through the fall, each one of us now hungers for significance in ways that are, are, are unhelpful. So what does that look like with a phone? We're constantly looking when we post something, how many people have liked it? Now, did, 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 did two people like it? Well, that was a fail. Um, <laughs> did, did 14 people like it? Well, th- that was 10 minutes ago. Maybe 15 like it now. And, and there's this longing to, did somebody notice me? Or, or we notice how many friends we have. Okay, I have so many hundred friends, but you have so many more hundred friends, or or you have less hundred friends, and there again, we're we're thinking, how important am I? Uh, in, in that sense, we we tend to make the mistake of believing that popularity equates to importance. And if enough people like me, or if enough people like what I'm doing, that means that I'm worthwhile and and I'm valuable. And what that does is it ends up using people. So we're not really trying to connect with them. The 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 Engagement with those friends is not really what's important. What's important is just the the quantity of them. What do you do with that? Where's the gospel enter into that? It's the recognition that God already sees you. He already knows your name. He already knows everything about you, including all the parts that you will not post on folk, on, on social <laughs> media. Uh, instead, what does he do with those? He he dies for them. He sacrifices himself. Not because you're the most special person in the universe, but in a very real way, he's not willing to enter into eternity without you uh, and, and longs for you. And, and what do we need? We, we need our specialness to come from him. 
um, within the, that understanding of how he thinks of us as special. So search for significance would be huge. Second one that, that I think is really key is what gets talked about is fear of missing out, FOMO. Um, I hate the acronym, but <laughs> it's one that everybody understands. This is the flip side, I think, to searching for significance. So if the search for significance is a self-reflective, am I special? Uh, fear of missing out is a search for connection. Am I part? Am, am I engaged? Am, am I connected? Do other people know um, that, that I'm part of the group? And for that, then I want to know that, that I know what's going on in your life and, and whatever you've posted. And if you posted something uh, and, and I don't know about it, then, then, I, then I'm missing out and I, I, I'm not really in the know. I had an awful experience. I write about it anonymously in the booklet. Um, I posted something to somebody's uh, thread, and then to my horror, discovered it was 24 hours ago, and and the information that they were looking for <laughs> had already been passed. And so now I'm frantically trying to delete that before they <laughs> notice, and before the community notices, and just think I'm managing stuff here. <laughs> Why? I, I feel foolish. Hmm. I feel like I, I, I didn't know something that I should have known. Here's, here's again, where what do I need from the gospel? I need to know that God's not ever going to let me miss out on anything that is essential. Everything that I need to enter into eternity, he's going to make sure I get. Uh, and as my confidence in him grows, it frees me up to say, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I didn't know about that, or I just found out, or yeah, no, I wasn't on social media 24-7, and so, yeah, there's a whole lot of things that have happened, fill me in. So search for significance, fear of missing out. I think the third, a third common longing, heart longing, is for security. We live in a very uncertain world. Um, things happen constantly. Oh, uh, you can go outside of our country and you realize that 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 uh, military and and those kind of things are are constantly in flux. You can come into our country and just feel the fear of people having to lock their doors, looking over their shoulders, not quite sure what's going to happen next. Or you watch the stock stock market go up and down, uh, and and there's always something chaotic about to take place. That and and I, I don't know. Is that going to get me? Is it going to hurt me? Is it going to harm me and and my family? This the 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 virtual world is a world that I have much more mastery over, because I decide where I'm going to go, and I decide how long I'm going to be there, and I decide whether or not I'm comfortable with what I'm seeing, and I decide for how long I'm going to be there. And it's a false sense of security, but man, it's compelling. And and I can feel like I'm a little bit more in charge of my world, and that you know, I, it allows me to forget that hurricanes and natural disasters take place. What's the solution here? Again, in the gospel, what does God promise? He promises to use absolutely every last thing that enters into your life for your good and by extension for the good of his people. And so as I believe that, I'm willing to engage real life, including all of the chaos. Um, in fact, I, I'm, I'm unwilling not to engage life because that means uh, I'm actually cutting myself out of good things. Now, they're going to be hard things as well and things that I don't necessarily like, but they're good things because he's promised to turn them into things that are positive. So search for significance, fear of missing out, security, those things are huge. I think the last one is, is big maybe for our society more so than for past societies, and that is just a, a glut of, of entertainment. Um, did people 200 years ago have anywhere near the same emphasis on being entertained passively, um, of listening to music rather than playing music, of watching sports rather than playing sports, of all those kinds of, I sit and I observe and watch things happen. And again, in, in the booklet, I, I reference a comic strip from Calvin and Hobbes back in 1991, where Calvin, the little boy, plops himself in front of the TV, which is an odd looking kind of box for us not anymore it's not a flat screen and and he demands of it pander to me <laughs> give me everything that i've ever wanted and I, I look at that and i think 
there's a quaintness to that, <laughs> you know, pandered to me, but there's only so many channels and, and the, it's pre-programmed and it's not really pandering to you compared to what I can get now off the internet. Um, but Calvin's cry of his heart is, is the cry of my heart. And it's the cry of the hearts of the people that I live in society with. We just have more options now. And here's where I think there's a real value to rediscovering the cultural mandate, rediscovering uh, the, the, the goodness of work, not the goodness of toil and labor, but the goodness of what God built into creation. You read through the first six days of creation, regardless of how you interpret them, and you realize that God likes to work. He's a, he, 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 he's a builder. He's a maker. He, he forms things, and he stands back, and he evaluates, and he says, man, that's good. And there's just a goodness to being involved with stuff. And then one of the very first things that he says to Adam is, name things. Take care of the garden. And you get this sense that God is a, a worker, capital W, and he makes an image of himself, an image of God, who's a worker, little w. And, and it, to the extent that we can help people understand that that's part of what Jesus redeems, the goodness of work, the goodness of investing into a world, the goodness of being tired at the end of a day saying, man, that, that was a lot of work, but, but it was good. That becomes more engaging than to simply being entertained. And you watch God, who is no, not, not simply a worker, but he's not a workaholic. He then takes a day to rest. And so neither one of those is um, something that he lives for. But they're both things that he's able to enter into and then things that he allows us to enter into. So I think those are, 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 are ones that most of all of us can relate to. Yeah, that, that's very, very good. And as you illustrated that, I mean, the importance of asking this question first and foremost points us to the gospel and shows us, yes, the gospel has something to say here and the, the gospel applies here and uh, I mean, yeah, that's first and foremost, the priority of kind of digging down to the heart. Uh, and then secondly, too, is just, you know, it, it kind of churns up all of this sin that's in our hearts to help yeah. us see it. And of course, we know we, we worship a gracious God who's not rubbing our face in it. <laughs> he's he's trying to conform us more to the image of his son, Jesus. And uh, and so that's important for us to be digging down and saying, okay, what is in our hearts and bringing it to the foot of the cross, confessing it and praying for the strength of the spirit to grow in these ways. So that's why it's an important question to ask for sure. So as we close this out, is there anything you want to add to that? I really like the the, the emphasis that you have at the, at the end. Um, information is helpful. It, 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 it'll point you in a certain direction. Um, you still have to experience God. You have to experience the love of Christ. You have to experience a relationship with a God who says, we can do better. Uh, and, and, and I've paved the way. I've opened the door. I've made it possible. And, and you engage with him and you actually live out your life. And without that, uh, it, it's just information. Uh, it's not really insight until you actually live it out. Exactly. Yeah, very good. Once again, the booklet is Obsessed with Your Phone, Disconnecting to Connect by William P. Smith. Uh, you can find it at New Growth Press. Again, it's a booklet, only 25 pages. Uh, you can buy them in bundles, you know, buy them to put out in your church foyer, to have a small group discussion, a very helpful resource. So, Bill, thank you so much for taking out so much time this week to talk with us and for writing this booklet. And we pray that it will uh, help churches and help Christians think through this issue. So thanks again. Thanks, Jim. Buy without money. Oh, come and feast without pay.